Well, hi, Thomas. Hello, Neil. Good to be yeah, back. back to, yeah, back to our fifth megalith and mystery project project um, video. Already five. Already five. The high five. Yeah. High five, man. So uh, the biggest story this week is uh, one of us has um, had the old runner. Yeah, I got I got the rod. It's rampant around here, but I can tell you it's just the regular flu, with a bit weirdness to it. I have to say, uh, I started feeling sick last Friday and the evening, and it just felt like a regular flu or head cold. And then, then it got very fluy over the weekend and Monday, and uh, bed spins, the, all the classical. Yeah. Head, the, the headaches were vicious, but I did lose my sense of. Uh, my sense of smell completely and uh, I lost most of my sense of taste but not all of it and uh, it's still it's still lingering there you know that's why I, I, I wasn't going to do this this morning but I decided that it's better to do something productive that that's you know yeah, well, you did, yeah. Yeah. but it does affect your it did, it did affect me my, my brain it made me kind of melancholy and weird and it was kind of a weird sentient thing about it it definitely is a different kind of seasonal virus but in terms of symptomatic, it's no different than the regular flu. Not at all. It's just a new flu, as far as I'm right, concerned. Yeah. So you started to meet people now that have had it. And I've got a friend, Patty, over in New York uh, State. Hello, Patty, if you're there. Uh, she said exactly the same thing as you. She had the flu. She was in bed for a few days, got up. But sense of taste just uh, and smell yeah. went away. But it's, it's slowly coming back. So... There you go. That's that's the that's the, the runner then. Yeah, yeah. No, it definitely. It was all. It was always real. It was just that, mm. it, like, it wasn't. An, it, it didn't justify that shutting down the world. Well, exactly. Crashing every economy around the world, and uh, and you guys are back to your weird ritual of clapping and dancing. Oh, or whatever. tonight. Yeah, eight o'clock. We'd all been told to go outside, bang, like a load of, uh, 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 you know, going, yeah, like yeah. old seals. And, yeah. yeah, is anybody going to be there? We've all got the clap. We've all got the clap. But, uh, well, you know, the ones who do it. come out tonight will be the, the worst of the worst. They're the ones, if you were living on the, the Gestapo, they'd be reporting Anne Frank. You know, they're the ones who come out yeah. tonight and the most dangerous on your neighborhood. Well, so I'll it's, not be it's, doing good. It. It's, it's good for that. Uh, it's good for that reason. See who's, uh, who's doing it, who's not. I'll be on the naughty list because I ain't going out there hanging my pots and pans and jumping up and down in my dressing gown. No, too cold. It's freezing out there now. It was in summer before. I didn't do it then. So what are going to do now it's freezing cold and ice on the ground. So, yeah. Actually, that, that's good weather for killing viruses. So if they, you know, that's a good virus. The, the, the dry, icy weather is great for killing viruses. So that's got to maybe be good that'll news. get cured. That's, that's got to be yeah. good news. Yeah, shutting down the economy to... Um, so on that, on that thing, shut down the economy, which is basically a, a communist takeover. That's the a war. And uh, luckily now in America, we've got... Um, a, a, a government which can follow, follow this strategy through. Yeah, it's very strange what's going on, and especially Washington D.C. Yes, they it looked, it had I don't know it had the deep state playbook written to me anyway written all over it. It seemed like you know when those psyops within psyops. Yeah, there was real protesters there, but there was definitely seemed to be plants as well. I don't know from what side or both sides, but it's one of those things that it's such a head wrecker. You know, yeah. a guy, guys with horn hats inside this council, inside the Capitol Hill chamber, on the speaker's desk. It's it was it reminded me of the yeah. kind of things you saw in the Ukraine when they had that real strange revolution back mm. in 2015, I think it was. Yeah, and you had like this. All these performer, performance artists were involved in groups like Femen. That's a weird thing as well. It's very tragic. A woman died yesterday, but yeah. the day before yesterday, they said a prayer in two days ago, a prayer in the Capitol building where they finished it, not only a man, but for gender diversity, they finished a prayer, a woman, as mad as that is. And then so a strange. woman is shot dead inside the same a, And a woman is shot dead inside the you same You just building. really wonder. Now, about I know there's all these. I know, but also what, what things are working out on archetypal levels as well. There's also the, there's a there's the real kind of w war for the subconscious mind, the psyche, politics, the mm -hmm. deep state, the secret unknowns as we're calling them now. Absolutely, and there's also yeah. the people who are fulfilling archetypes, who are you know 
what we talk about here on the show every week with the tarot and stuff like that. Yeah, they're yeah, fulfilling yeah. roles in society, you know. And they start uh, to be standing out that much more, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. I relax by listening to Dolly Parton music. That's how I relax at the moment. Oh, great. <laughs> she makes me forget everything. I don't know why. She just does. Well, I was using Bruce Springsteen last night <laughs> till till uh, early hours <laughs> in the morning, just uh, chilling out there, you know, listening yeah. to the boss. It was uh, good stuff. All good stuff. Oh, yeah, you, you need to, you, you need to you need to do that stuff. You need to do it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, we're talking about the the, the sort of archetypes good and evil and and we're at a time now as we were saying last week with jupiter and saturn and the fight and we were saying that things haven't things are everything's hanging in the air but one by one you know it's it's like things are getting sort of brexit is sorted now the u.s election is sorted now hopefully and um hopefully one more thing um and we can uh obviously being get back being up to altruistic yeah (laughs) yeah I, I find I find I, I now get my sort of like views from astro- astrologers. Astrologers yeah. I trust are now the people I follow. I can't, I won't be I can't deal with uh, you know political pundits and mm. strategists anymore. It's now I'm following astrologers because they seem to be hitting the the results much better. And it's uh, I really do believe in the, the, this fight between Saturn and uh, Jupiter, and Jupiter is going to be yeah. winning. Oh, there was massive wings just after the equinox as well. It was as if like you could almost feel the fight going on in the air. So, if, but if you believe in astrology and yeah. as, as above reflecting down below, which I do believe, then uh, hopefully we're going to see some uh, uh, the, the the better side gaining some sort of ground because we've lost it for a long time. Yeah, I, I disagree. It's, I, I'm sorry, I agree. And I disagree with people who are terribly negative. I don't think, I think there's a lot of positive for it. I think mm. even things like the Great Reset that itself could be a psyop. They may not be a Great Reset. They just maybe, it might be a business trick to make us think there is so we can go smash and grab rate on, on different yeah. businesses. So you, uh, you don't, you have to be very careful not to believe anything. And that's why I'm saying the astrology thing seems to be the one thing that's given me clarity. Absolutely. And that great reset, the reset thing as well, you know. I mean, it is, I do see this as part of it, if not all of it. I tell you, it's really weird seeing that tree growing out of your head, I have to say. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but uh, it's, yeah, it's like the, the great horn god, Karuna. Yeah, yeah. It's the halo, it's yeah. the halo. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I've always said, oh, yeah. Um, the oh, whole idea. There's, there's Venus, there's, there's Saturn and Jupiter. That's it. It's the fight is going on above you right now. Just spin it round. Yeah. Um, the the whole idea of the taking market share by closing small businesses down, putting people on the dole and giving them uh, the uh, what, the the pay over what's the, what's the name of the pay? I know you get three hundred euros over there. It's furloughing. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, PUP identical employment pay payment. Yeah, and then I was looking at, uh, I was thinking, they've been talking about this universal uh, basic income for many, many years. I just just figured yesterday, I thought, universal basic income, yeah, about five years ago, they changed the whole of the benefit system in the UK to universal credit. I thought, well, we've got the word there already. And then people over the last year now have been on a very, very very, uh, low basic, well, an 80% basic income. So actually, we're already in it, universal credit, uh, universal basic oh, income. Yeah. All they have to do is get to the end and say, OK, I'm sorry that you, you've lost your job and everything, but we'll carry on paying you a basic income. And it, it's in place, isn't it? It's done through the back door. Uh, what they call the stimulus payment in America, the furlough in the UK, and mm. the PUP in Ireland, and, and what they ever have in other countries, they're all names for UBI. They're all, it's UBI in their new name. It's, yeah, it's sneaking it in it's there. Like a, it's like a trial run of UBI. It's like mm. a trial run, almost, yeah. And for people who don't know what it means, the negative side of it, it might seem a really good thing at the beginning. Yeah, oh, no, well, given not. over your control of all your finances to the government, and uh, whether you can travel or whether you can buy food, or because if it comes electric currency, that's to be avoided well, at all well, costs, I'd say. Well, 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 well
absolutely everything. Like, yeah, you, you can't you can't afford to buy food, and then the whole idea of um, okay, well we'll also get we'll also offer it to people who've got property by paying the mortgage off for them and let them live on the property for the rest of their lives. And you say, no, I'm not doing that. And then unfortunately, interest rates going to have to go up to fifteen percent. Yeah. And then uh, you you. you you're going to be forced to do it. Yep. But, uh, Your home becomes part of the national housing stock. Absolutely. And then when a family needs a place to live, they say, well, they're getting the upstairs in your house. You're, you, you just have the downstairs. You don't need a whole house. That's it. And this house will go from council house to private house, back to council house. But I'm going to yep. avoid this like the plague. I, you know, just, we yep. just play by ear as always, you know, or, uh, by trying to work under the radar. But what about this? Uh, you say the astrology. Have you have you talked to people that still can't see what's in the future? Like there's a, a like a grey dark area, so they can't see yes or yeah, no. Yeah, it's starting to resolve itself now. The, the astrologers I follow are saying the same thing. It's uh, generally the 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 outlook for anyone any the, the kind of deep state people is terrible, apparently. And right. there's a cosmic battle, like you said, going on in heaven, which yeah. is also reflected in human consciousness. And it still has to resolve itself. But every single one I talk to, including tarot card readers, good ones who do divination, all tell me that they're getting positive readings. Oh, well, well that's... So for us, for, you know, for the ones, it's that the deep state has overplayed its hand yeah. and uh, this, this kind of thing, you know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's rolling the dice one too many times. I mean, people have been told, stay at home again. You know, we'll put you into uh, tier five, which you'd have brought out of nowhere. But it's just until the old thingy comes out and then um, we'll all go back to normal. If you try that again, in summary, I don't think people are going to be you know, taken in. I mean, fool me once, fool me twice, fool me three times, fool me four yeah, times. They're already, they're already furious about this one. Mm. But at the same time, too, it's like, well, good enough for you because you wanted this. This is what you're screaming for. And the, and now you got what, you know, to be careful what you wish for, because now you're finding out what the real game is. When you laugh at, at the call, the rest of us conspiracy theories, theorists and laugh at us, tinfoil hatters. Well, yeah. guess what? You know, you were wrong and you're finding it out the hard way. Well, that's very true, isn't it? Yeah, very, very true. Anyway, so the future is uncertain, but looking good. So that's about all we can say about that. Yeah, and we have to create our own personal, individual, and local future, regardless of what happens. A parallel society. We can't. Well, the best the, way, the best way to do that like, is with this chap. Oh, the good old magician. Yes, number number one. Number one. Looking after number one. Looking after number one. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, that's true. Um, so. <laughs> Well, uh, I won't hold it up because I'll put a picture of it on the uh, on the screen so people can refer to it. But people about to just look at the picture, which is here. Um, so I go first with our magician. Yeah, you go first. Okay. You're uh, hosting the video today, so it's your. Oh your yeah, board. of course. So we should say that, shouldn't we? So this will be on my YouTube channel and your playlist. Playlist, so yeah, always subscribe to your both channels and always subscribe to both playlists to make sure you miss nothing. Amen. Amen. And don't forget to thumbs up and share as well. I know you've, it's been doing well anyway, but it's like this is. I, I was just talking to someone, a pair, a known person, should I say, one of my mm -hmm. celebrity friends, and uh, they were telling me that this is the best dialogue they've seen on the on YouTube on esoteric uh, discussion. Oh, so excellent. get it out to everyone get it out to everyone yeah please do yeah and what, and what they said about it was that it's not it's not from a, a fear-based negative or christian viewpoint it's just a, a regular discussion and two normal mm. fellas two normal yeah. fellas talking about it is really refreshing so you know spread the word get get people yeah. properly educated rather than you know traumatized absolutely yeah please do absolutely um yeah, well, thanks for that. Yeah, because we need to we need to get it out, and um, but it's good to hear that some one of your um, uh, a, a positive message in in that regard. Anyway, so that's that's brilliant. Uh, so concentration. 
There's no way that over is up there, isn't he? Concentration is uh, the magician. Um, in my Western mystery um, tradition, uh, from that direction, um, when you, in, the, in the, the tarot you have a thing called uh, con, uh, opposites. There's another word for it, but it basically means the opposite. So the, every card is the opposite yeah. to the previous card. So the magician uh, is inside a garden, very enclosed area in like, of a house. And the fool is out there on top of his mountain is a great outdoors. The fool is a fool and the magician is a wise man. So you see you've got lots of lots of opposites. And you could, there's a whole load of those that if you can see in the cards, see, see how you can find, put it in the comments below, I'm saying. Uh, the fool was the, the universal life force, uh, which we which we call the superconsciousness, which is um, the overall life power. And very much in contrast to the magician, who is self-consciousness. So we're very Jungian now. It's great that Jung found all these secrets and brought them, brought them to be mainstream. Uh, the Hebrew letter Alf, Alf, which is associated to this tarot card, is also means house. So then you've got the uh, you've got the the idea of the internal small area concentrated. It's like the great outdoors of the fool concentrated to one point all magical all magical uh, operations basically are concentration and not only magical uh, uh, um, operations normal operations in in everyday uh, existence because when, even in terms of church services are a concentration into one place of one particular thought and that's how everything gets built right basically uh, the fool was not uh, the magician is one. So the, the fool was like sitting there on the mountain after not moving. It was after it came after a cycle of reincarnation or a or, or, or personal cycle building session. And the magician is one. So he's now at the beginning, like a little spot. He's number one. He's starting. The magician's known as uh, Mercury's, uh, Mercury's, uh, Hermes or Mercury, which is basically. The messenger of the gods, and you'll see as we as I go through this a little bit what I mean by that. He has roses above him. That's a like uh, that's active desire. Uh, so that's that re reflects above. That re reflects the super consciousness of the fool. And, and the red roses are roses are always desire. Red roses are active desire. Uh, he has a wand in his hand, so he's pointing up to the super conscious power, drawing down the enemy. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, drawing down. Yeah, and the hands as well. So the hands at the top, and it's going through him, and he's pointing down uh, to super to subconsciousness. Um, yeah, so that's what he's doing basically. He's drawing down the energy right through himself and putting it into the into the subconsciousness. Now above his head, he's got the, the the figure for infinity. Now this is like the fool because the only two letters you can draw or numbers you can draw, without taking your pen off the paper or a paper or a note. And an infinity sign. The infinity sign is the, uh, mm -hmm. the vibration of life, and it's uh, and it's obviously it's saying that the life force is infinite, and it's also saying that you've got two notes. So it's like saying whatever you wish for, it can come either good or evil. There's, it's an opposite. You got you know, got a good and evil. So it's like it opening up to two. Um, Two separate things, which is dual, dualism, duality, as we were talking last week. The garden down the bottom is, uh, is subconsciousness. So it's basically what he's doing. So then that's the high priestess, the next card. So he's drawing down the power from, from super consciousness, drawing it through himself, which is self consciousness, which is us, and then he's concentrating that power down into subconsciousness. He's not, he's not think, he has an idea. He thought he thought that well, what I really want, what my desire is, and he's he's drawing the power down, put filtering it through that idea that he's got whatever he wants to bring into manifestation, and without uh, thinking about how this is going to happen, he's just passed it straight down into his subconscious, which is the the garden or the high priestess, and the the idea is that the results will come from that subconscious area. And that's really what the the whole thing that the the tarot, this tarot card that the magician's all about. 
But just to finish off with the table, uh, the table's made of wood, so that's basically it's it's come from, the wood has come from the garden from the garden. So what he's the only things that he's got here, the materialistically, have come from subconscious. They've come out of the garden, and then they've got the uh, the the four implements on the garden, which are the four elements, because everything is made out of the four elements. If you think about it, the wand is attention, which is which is what the card's about. Very important attention. The cup is memory, attention as because it's pointing, like we said before. As your point, that's your <laughs> point of attention. The cup is memory in the way that if you pour water into a cup like that, the, the cup and the, it, it remembers the shape of your idea. Uh, sword uh, is action, like uh, cutting to make things happen. Like uh, I remember from my business school days, Schumpeter, the Austrian economics, talked about the, uh, the act of creative destruction. So that's the bring, building, bringing down to build up again. And the last one is the, the coin or the pentacle. And that's the finished, the finished article. It's saying that yeah. um, you've used all the, the elements to bring it into one physical thing. And then you've got a coin which you can spend. So you've brought it into manifestation. So the idea is set a goal. Uh, visualize the goal, try and make it into a picture because pictures work much better. Draw the attention, the attention from the super consciousness through yourself, subconsciousness, transfer it into the, the subconsciousness. <laughs> I hope this is making sense. And um, results will follow. And there is my interpretation of the magician. Over to well, you. That's a, that, that's a superb, uh, that's a superb interpretation of the symbolism and the meaning of the card i can only add uh, yes i agree with every single thing you said no 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 difference there i can only add this appendix to it to what you just okay. said uh the first thing is that i have two i have two cards here of the magician from the two decks i have the classic italian deck and the wow. uh the heathen otherworld. I think it's now called the pagan otherworld. I'll talk about the classic Italian. I love that first. one. Yeah, I do. I love the, that one. Well, he's also uh, the magician is also known as uh, the bagatelle or la baltour, right? Now, in the Italian deck and in Italian uh, tarot tradition, he's associated with a cobbler, and you'll see he has all the tools that a cobbler needs: the coin for payment, the, the knife for cutting leather, and 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 so on, and the uh, there's even a shoe on the table. These are the shoes given to the to the fool. The fool is no longer now taking baby steps. They can walk anywhere they want because the magician has given the who's the cobbler or the shoemaker oh, yeah, has yeah. given the fool feet. Okay. Mm. Now the the magician, uh, Le Baltour or the La Bagatelle, El Bagatelle, represents the will, like you said. Yeah. The 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 taking of the unconscious and bringing it into manifestation. So therefore, the, the fool now has the abilities to make things happen. He has free will. He has self-determination. He has the ability to do what he, the tools that he has now to step into super consciousness or the material world. As you said, the hand of pulling down from the, the, the immaterial world as a conduit through his own body, through his own will and creative powers into the material world. Now, in Alfred Douglas's uh, classic on the, the best tarot book ever written, the tarot with symbols, meanings, and mystery from the early 70s. This is my original copy when I was a kid. It's in bits. But, uh, it's a fantastic book. He, you described him to Hermes, the messenger to God. Mm -hmm. he, that's mm -hmm. true. But he also compares him to Prometheus, who takes the fire from the God. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. the same thing, and that's the same thing, taking the fire same from thing, the God, yeah, yeah. same thing, because it took away the God's exclusive uh, capacity to create and gave it to man, which is all, very much stands as very strongly within Freemasonry and things like that. The concept of the Amelusius, the, the year of light, when, when consciousness came into man and he stopped being an animal and started to being like a kind of a God. Now, he, the, the table is made from wood, yeah, earthly matters. And in your version, the older version, like the Rider weight ones and the, uh, the Tower de Marseille, he's got a white vest underneath here, P 
purity yeah, yeah. and innocence. So the fool is inside. The fool is inside. Mm. And uh, within the Tower of De Marseille, his cap is a kind of a floppy hat. And the lamiscus or the symbol of infinity is in the folds in the hat. Again, oh, that's, yeah. the, that's the zero twisted, the zero of the fool, or the north as you call it in England, twisted in 3D space time to make a loop. I can't do it in my hand. Yeah, to clever, make, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been twisted in 3D space time. So it's it's in the it's it's it it's fashioned. This is what the will does. It fashions things, and just like the, uh, it, it's still a, it's still a whole zero. Just like the yin and yang signs made of the black and the white, the polar opposites, opposing opposites. You said the yeah. uh, the, the diametric uh, battle, but it's still in the same circle. It's still the mm -hmm. same. That's the same thing as twisting the zero yeah. and getting the infinity yeah, in yeah. space. Now, in the heathen other world, which is now marketed under the name of the pagan other world, they have fashioned or designed a beautiful deck. This, by the way, they have designed the the, the magician to look more oh, like a shaman. Right. A shaman and a uh, a magician are two very different things, but that's the kind of image they've gone for. Mm -hmm. Now, his table is actually carved out of a tree, a trunk. That's what it shows that it's coming from the primal forces of the earth, it, but it's been fashioned. It's a natural tree trunk that's been fashioned into a table in the same way the will fashions ideas and imagination and creativity into, into a manifestation. He's also standing in the below a mountain, and these are the mountains that the, the yeah. fool has traveled across. Remember you spoke about that last oh, week? Of course, I forgot to, to mention, yeah. Yeah. And he's come across that and he's now here and he's gained experience coming across these hills. He's wearing shoes now. He's not bare feet. Yes, yeah. And he's in that classic John Travolta Saturday Night Fever pose of <laughs> staying alive. And down. Yeah, staying alive <laughs> up and down. You see, the people in Hollywood are very clever. They understand archetypal mm. symbolism as well. He's drawing the fire of the gods like Prometheus and he's bringing it into manifestation on the earth. And, That's fantastic. Uh, and that and that's it. That's the that's that's mm. the magician. The magician yeah. is the skill of the self taking creativity. Mm. See, we're all magicians. Anyone's ever created anything oh. in their life from imagination, yeah. whether it was building a toy or painting a painting or writing a poem or singing, writing a song, anything, building yeah, a chair. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, it, it's magic. And that's what that's the basic meaning of that kind of magic. And uh, he's. He's now in the in the in the classic European sense. Say you would get in, say the the tarot de Marseille in France, the 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 Italian ancient tarot. This one from the, the Middle Ages, not the Middle Ages, but from the seventeen hundreds, but the originally from and the uh, the uh, the Swiss tarot. He's a traveling showman as well. He's a bit of a chancer. He's both genius, wise man, and mountain bank. He's a bit of a loudmouth, a provocateur. He's a, a bit of a showman. He's a you know, and even even on the heat of another one, one, he's you know, he's putting he's he's a he's a showman. Here he's John Travolta on the dance floor. You know, he's a, he's he's got a bit of the razzle dazzle too. And part of the razzle dazzle is the sales pitch, and that's the sparkle of the coin, of the pentacle. Yeah, the, yeah. Dazzle, yeah. the glitter. The glittering prize. A bit know? like the magician on the stage, I suppose. Uh, like the, yeah. Uh, yeah. So in many ways, uh, the uh, the magician card and the character on it is perhaps the most human of all the, the cards because it represents all the aspects and attributes and inclinations of what we deal with in life to get ahead. When you go for a job interview, you have to kind of put on a razzle-dazzle show. You have to show confidence. You have to dress up for the job. You have yeah. to show that I can be the man who can help you or the woman who can do this and bring it into what I can give you what you want from me and this kind of thing. Notice that the wand points upwards. It doesn't point at you. It's not a commanding thing. It's not like uh, I'm the boss. It's the boss is the super conscious world. The outer, the absolutely. outer. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all I'm doing is I'm a conduit, as, as Beethoven said, my music comes from, I don't know. I just wake up in the morning and there it is. Comes from up there, yeah. I mean, that, uh, the, the invisible stream. 
what, what you said about uh, us all magic and I mean uh, this is the magician is just everything that we already do every day as a natural uh, human beings isn't it it's just that we're saying we could we if you want to use it uh, more precisely and more powerfully then know what you're doing and, and act through it I love, what you, I love what you said about the shoes I didn't notice the shoes on the Italian card uh, yeah. because as you said it's the, the fool is stood up there on the uh, on the the mountainside waiting to go down in the valley so we're now down in the valley and it, and we're ready to set off on on our, on our journey so there is his shoes to set off on these journey I, I love that uh, that symbol and also it's wonderful his feet have hardened from the journey they're not baby soft feet they're like yeah. your fingers learning how to play the guitar they get like really hard calluses the, his feet are now he's got he's got natural shoes what the magician card is saying to us is that uh, this you know You've got to, you've got to, you, you've got to talk the talk, and you've got to walk the walk. And when people see the the magician card, they think, oh, it's all about magical forces and magic and stuff like that. Well, it depends on the context, of course. But what it's really about is, you know, if uh, you've got to take it, you've got to do it, and you've got to own it, and you've got to make it. And uh, you're on your own now. You're no longer suckling on mama's breast. You're no longer holding daddy's hand. You're off yeah. on your own, and that's your subconscious off on its own. And, you, and your shoes are, they say they're old and they're, they're gnarled, which means this is not his first journey. He's been on these journeys before. That's the infinity symbol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also, he's a traveling showman, so he's not of this world, which is also a, a, to tell you to not, uh, what's the word, be completely trapped within your culture or your religion or your society or community you are now the magician forging your own will and your own path and that's what that a lot of that is about he's a traveling show he comes into town he goes step on up folks razzle dazzle look what i make he makes a pair of shoes because in the old days I, i'm sure it was well in our rural Ireland anyway cobblers used to come to town on a horse and wagon mm -hmm. fix the shoes and then move off move on so there's that, you know, the, the kind of, there's a, he's a traveling salesman. And also that represents inspiration. Someone who might come into your life who has their own magic, their own manifestations will. And you say to yourself, you know, I can do something like that myself with my own ideas. You know, my own thing. Fantastic. So he's yeah, a facilitator yeah. as well. He's a facilitator. Yeah, a facilitator and a, a, happen, a maker of things that happen. Yeah. So do you want to... Uh, um, we mentioned something earlier about uh, the cathars and continuation, didn't we? Was it kind of ties into this, I think, or you can yep. be tied in, because there's a, it's like I come from the ancient mystery tradition, and uh, the idea is that, that all these secrets have been passed down through some sort of, like they call it the invisible stream, don't they? This, this stream that's gone down through the ages, and, and it's basically what we're talking about now, and we said it was possibly, uh, I think we said last week, it was possibly the knowing of physics, that this is, this is just explaining physics, isn't it, or psychology. It's just, it's just science that... So well, I thought... Quantum, uh, quantum theory, really, when you think about it. Yeah, oh, absolutely, it is quantum yeah. theory, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing, isn't it, that, that science has eventually come into this to, to understand. So there must, whatever this came from originally, whether it was some pretty high um, technical advanced society and this was kept and passed down it's really weird that what we're, that they're just discovering it now to be true it's, same, that's same amazing same the, the vedas and the, the you know in india you know they're like the, the hindu vedas were talking about you know the manifestation of reality through conscious thought six yeah. seven eight thousand years ago which is what they do with their um the, the soundings what they call it i can't remember the name of it now yeah, that's, um, why, uh, that's why uh, Oppenheimer quoted the, the, the Bhagavad Gita when he saw the atomic bomb explode. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I am the destroyer of worlds. Destroyer of worlds. Amazing, isn't it? Um, so do you want me to uh, go through a bit of the cathar? Yeah, I, I watched your video the other day. It was very good. I shared it around there. Oh, cheers. People should watch that. Neil has a new video out on the cathars. Well, yeah, go ahead. Start on that one because that's... Yeah, that's I just... Like, can I, can I, can I, can I segue it though? If, if, if Please do, yeah, it. go for it, yeah. The, as I said, the, uh, the, the magician is a traveling salesman, okay, a traveling showman, right? Right? 
Now, within the Cathar tradition, that's where the troubadours came from. Yeah, and the troubadours yeah. were traveling minstrels. You could hire, mm. say, you wanted to court a girl, and you would say, can you write a love song for her and send her on my behalf? And then you go there and say, you are the most beautiful girl that ever lived. Will you? I love you. This kind of thing. They were the magicians. They were using magic. They were transferring his... His, his emotional feelings into music and song and then relaying it to a woman who would probably fall in love with him as the conduit of them through their through the conductor's wand or the, the musical instrument so yeah that's the so the the cathars through the troubadours troubadour method were very much tied into this kind of thing okay that's what i wanted to say yeah oh, even, no, that's true i mean in the longer dock so the 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 courts of the uh, the, the local areas like the Trencavels and the, the Raymond of Toulouse and, and lots, of, lots of little, there's a particular um, chateau, uh, Puiva, and that was a troubadour, a troubadour court, all the fun and dancing and entertainment and there's lots of different, and, that's, and they travel from court to court and that was a really big thing down in, in the Languedoc area. It must have been a wonderful society to live in whilst they were allowed to live in it. But uh, so I will do, I'll put a little, you know, the things you click at the end, the end screens onto my cathar thing. Because I'm, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to do a playlist of it. And I've just done the beginning. So I'm going to go all the way through. But um, I thought I'd tie it in towards the end of the, the cathar. It's about the idea of what happened to the mysteries that they, that they held. Uh, so there's a little bit of a timeline thing going on. Uh, because, and it ends up at Montsegur. We know about the uh, the burnings in Montsegur, but the whole idea of that the the surrounding landscape in the Languedoc, like Ren le Chateau and Montsegur and all that surrounding areas, is um, that it was a, a place where things were hidden, um, which was kind of well known. Really. It started off um, the, the Rome with the Roman Empire, then the Visigoths appeared around 410, and they sacked Rome. And then the Visigoths built this huge empire with Toulouse as its centre. And the, and what is Renle Chateau now? Uh, it used to be a massive city with uh, 30,000 people called Red Eye. And Red Eye was their Fort Knox, and they hid all the treasure that they pe uh, pilched, flinched from Rome or whatever. So that was their Fort Knox. Which is, that was in our dark ages, basically. So it was around the 500s. And then the Merovingians who were uh, who worked for the Visigoths took over um, from the Visigoths. And they um, and they were known as the long-haired sorcerer kings. They had, a, they had an ancient mystery, it said. Uh, so wherever that ancient mystery came from, uh, we're not, we don't know. But what, they, what it said they did there was there's fortified caves in the longer dock in the mountains called Spoogler, and they hid a lot of their treasure when they basically had to uh, um, withdraw. And um, they were supposed to be part of the uh, Nazareth uh, line or the um, the Essenes. So that brings us up to the Rex Deus families, who were the family that started the Knights Templar around 1110-ish up in Champagne. The connection between Champagne and Languedoc is, is huge. So the leading families up in the Languedoc, uh, they, were, they were the Cathars uh, and the Knights Templar, basically, because when the, when the Crusade, Crusade took part, they were asked by the church to help because they were taking part in the Middle East and they said, no, why should I kill my brother? So the Templars stayed right out of it. But the idea is that when the Templars first left Champagne and went to uh, to the Holy Land, to Ultramar, as they called it, they built their home on the top of Solomon's Temple, dug down below the Temple, yeah. and again relieved, and relieved that they, all the, the ancient uh, artifacts and mysteries and manuscripts were taken away. And it's thought that these could have been taken to the Languedoc area as well, because it was nearer, and that was also the Lights Templar uh, well, it was going to be the Knights Templar homelands. So then in 1245, that's when the siege of Montsegur 
took place. And uh, I mean, they had the they had the the Albigensian Crusade, which we could talk about sometime. And it, luckily, that finished when uh, Simon de Montfort got um, blown, his, his blades brought out with uh, the pale lord of a mangonel sent by the women of the of Toulouse, which is fantastic. So they they um, they did for Simon de Montfort, and that kind of ended pretty much after that. The 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 Albigensian Crusade, and but then unfortunately the Inquisition started in about 1233. The Lord of Cathars, 200 of them, headed up to the mountain top chateau of Montségur. And I tell you, if anybody's not seen Montségur, it, it, it is it is one of the wonders of the world for me. When you drive up from uh, Alec de Bar up the back road, you can just massive, huge mountain with a little castle on top. It is an absolute dream to see and when you're climbing up to it you can feel the history absolutely feel it's a beautiful beautiful place i mean extra beautiful and it's that duality again between the evil that took place there and the beauty of the place but anyway uh two times once uh whilst the, the, sage, the sage was on a couple of cathars he said went down the sheer mountain face at the back with some with whatever it was treasure they took them yeah, to these yeah. caves and hid them and then there was a siege and after the siege was lifted the, 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 the it was after about it was after 10 months it was getting to winter they blew the horn from the citadel said okay we give up and they negotiated a two-week truce which is amazing isn't it after 10 months siege they let them have two weeks extra and it's within that two weeks that they think cathars four or five cathars disappeared again down the back of the the mountain taking all these secrets the ancient secrets of the uh the cathars to these spoogler caves so and that's where they were basically hid so then the two weeks later the cathars were brought down and burnt to death 220 of them then because 200 of the the army people um decided took the consolement and became catholic cathars so where did they go? They obviously carried on the tradition. They moved into the Pyrenees and started up small groups and also over in Lombardy in, in northern Italy. So the Cathars did continue, but they went underground as the Templars did. And one little, one little addendum to that is 700 years later, the Nazis from Würzburg, where I think you've been, um, were looking into the Anunnaki, were looking into a guy called Otto Ron. And then 700 years later, they went and looked, took a uh, look around the area around Montségur, and they said to have found all this history of Solomon's Temple and the Cathars and the Knights Templar. And that is what they built, uh, put into industry. And they, so they thought uh, about 200 um, new companies where all the wealth went into. And so a lot of the companies we, we see now were, came from the Nazis originally. But a lot of the secrets either went to them or went underground. Okay, so <laughs> that's my little um, bit on that. When you say secrets going into companies, do you mean things like alchemy and different kinds of yeah, things yeah. like that? It's different sciences. Yeah, because the Ananerb, uh, Ananerb from which was part of the SS, wasn't it? Yeah. They went around searching all the ancient mysteries. So they not only had the wealth, but they had the the ancient mysteries as well and we see it don't we i mean we, even things you say well how come it, the, the, when they do something it always seems to be on a, a particular significant date so somebody studied all this stuff haven't they when uh, when i was in Velasburg, i had the, ho the whole place to myself all the whole day and uh, i did not strangely and i should have get a sensation of any kind of evil in fact quite the opposite it's it felt very powerfully magical in a in a good way and uh, it had a very profound effect on me spiritually that night as well but uh, I, in the in you know the, the Beelsburg the, there's a whole castle and there's the famous lower crypt which uh, you know it represents the subconscious mind and it has the swastika above and in the middle they say was a burning flame but I think that was a pool that was a pool of water representing Mirmir's well in uh, the Nordic tradition 
the, the upper part is the top of the tree of life, funny enough. I just did by mistake that this today, but it's appropriate. And um, again, in Vilasburg, a place that was the center of the SS, you expected to be filled with a terrible dark energy. And it wasn't, it was quite, quite calming. And like you said, I felt the history, but they have a fantastic library and exhibition center down there. And I was the only one in it, it was January and it was just opened after Christmas and as the weather was poor, so I had it all for myself. And in the, in the library, the sheer amount of documentation on the Ammermen and the things connected to the Templars and the exhibitions to Tibet as well is quite remarkable. I mean, this wasn't just a fringe, a fringe thing among the 1920s and 30s, the Germanic Volkish movement. This was an enormous topic of discussion and uh, study. And... Uh, I often find it interesting to say like secrets missing. It brings us back to the tarot. I find it interesting that the tarot appears in Italy around the same time the Cathars vanish or well, exterminate. Right. So right. that's kind of, that we never know there could be a thing there. Now, like everyone else, back in the day, I taught Holy Blood, Holy Grail was absolutely fantastic. And their theory about the, um, the people who escaped down the cliff was the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Yeah, they that was that. A secret. I never, I never believed that one. But uh, they're definitely, like you said, it makes much more sense that there was some kind of a, especially when you think of what would have been underneath Jerusalem, the Temple of Solomon was there and uh, magical powers that were harnessed by King Solomon using the jinn and mm -hmm. so on to build that temple and uh, the whole thing of the, the demonology of the, of, the, of the thing. And that, and especially when the Templars were so associated with demonology as part of their persecution, it does explain an awful lot, I have to say, uh, the um, the 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 Third Reich aspects, the armor. It's a shame, like really, that the Third Reich became Hitlerified. Because if you if you look at the Volkish movement, and if you look at the Armament movement, and the Ariosophy and the things leading up to it, they were actually quite a good thing. They were about yeah, yeah. Re going back to nature. The, the whole racist thing was totally overblown. Even Guido von List. His racist writings were very minor, very minor. And uh, most of his stuff was had to do with, you know, if you look at Ostara magazine, I mean, I grew up uh, being told that that was a Nazi pamphlet and it was all about the, 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 the you know, attack, get, get these people, get that people. It really talks about the power of blood and blood magic. And there's the sexual energy of electricity and things like that, like a villain like kind of. Orgone energy thing. This is the kind of these are the kind of stories that are in Ostara, and these people were back to nature, uh, natural philosophers. It was not mm -hmm. based on hatred or anything like that. Now, unfortunately, when it was politicized by the Third Reich in the nineteen twenty late twenties and early thirties, it was stolen by them and then thrown away. Like that's the irony of the whole thing is that the Third Reich used that whole movement to get into power. And when they got into power, they said, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't, we're, 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 you know, it's all hocus pocus. It's all bullshit. Uh, we, 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 you know, we, we recognize Christian churches now, you know, and we have no, uh, that was one of those, the thing was in 1934, they had the right concordat, which was an agreement between the Pope and the, the, the National Socialists that the National Socialists would not interfere with any or affect or, or, or give any problems to the Catholic Church in um, Germany, as long as the, the Vatican did not interfere in the in the lives of the National Socialists. So it was like a, an agreement, agreement a, yeah. you know, a Camp David kind of agreement thing. And that, that, that was the period where they all stopped being, uh, you know, Arman men, Ariosophists, and they moved into being like regular Christians or, you know, atheists and stuff like that. <coughs> and with the, what was left of it was maintained within the upper yeah. certain yeah. factions of the SS. Mm -hmm. And people like uh, Maria, Karl Maria Villegut and his friendship with Himmler. But Himmler, oh, in Himmler the end, was he, massive oh, into it, yeah. Yeah, and Himmler called him a nutcase in the end because as they moved towards it, I think that a lot of that had to do is that they, they couldn't control the magic that they unleashed and it turned on them. I think that's well, what Well, that will happen. <laughs> will, I will, will, will. And the... Um, yeah. When the magic Good was bad. used, when the, the magic was used to restore the soul of the German people 
who had been right. crushed by World War I. That was a good thing. It was wonderful, they wasn't it? That time, it how they managed to turn around Germany uh, yeah, after the... Um, yeah, it, they could it, not have done that without the pagan revival of the Volkish movement. No way could they have done that. That's what and it was, they it? did yeah. it, but then the black magic stepped in and they started using it to attack others. Mm. And that's what happened. They lost control of their own magic. They went from white magic to black magic. And, and, had it. And, and they probably had the magic of the Templars and stuff, as you said. I often find it very interesting that Rudolf Hess flew to Scotland of all places. Yeah. yeah on the yeah, yeah. date that was found is that the ancestors were found that found that, that were Knights Templars who had escaped mm. Philip II. Definitely. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and he was an interesting character. He was grew up in he grew up in Egypt, and he was there around the same time Crowley was dictated. Well, that the book of the law was dictated to uh, through uh, his wife Rose and into him at the Cairo Museum. All these things, the way they interlock. I and tell you, it, when you start you start studying these things, and they do, don't they? Everything goes off in tangents. You keep finding connections. That you, yeah. you would never have any, you would not, you, you wouldn't expect. You think, oh, that is connected to that. How did that? Yeah. Be? I mean, the Renly Chateau mystery, when you start looking into that, it's like everything in the world seems to be involved in this little chapel on top of a hill in the south of France. I mean, it's. Uh, and it's, how it affected the world. Yeah. When I was in Vienna, there's a cafe there. It's, it's a nice cafe, but it's not one of these spectacular Viennese cafes, uh, but it's a very nice cafe. And inside this little cafe on a side street, on a small street, at the same time, Marshal Tito, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Sigmund Freud were all there drinking coffee. At the same time, Stalin, Hitler, Tito, and F Freud. Now, Organized or coincidentally? No, no, just, it just became, they didn't know. The place that people went to. Yeah, and they were, they were just in different tables and probably didn't even know they wow. were there. Wow. The <laughs> they all it's just this weird thing like when you find out it's it's you know you find out like that hitler was in liverpool visiting his brother patrick brother-in-law patrick who was irish or he's married to an irish woman and at the same time uh carl Jung was having dreams about hitler's the pool uh, about uh, uh liverpool as the secret pool of life and uh the same time that was going on you had uh, the the this sort of like uh this, this in talking about the resurrection of votan the germanic god as the true god of the german people i mean you just couldn't make this stuff up it's almost as if there's um a, a, a sweep or an energy comes through the the planet that everybody's all it's like when you have an inventions people seem to Inventions get happen at the same time, you know. It's like like there's a, 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 an argument, like when you get a music, like when you get a music scene in a certain yeah. city all the time, like the way punk started in New York at the same time, and the Beatle, the Mersey Beat stuff started in, in Liverpool and, and the Manchester scene in the nineties. It's just so bizarre. There's another like an energy comes comes through, comes yeah. along. There's the the magician with his wand tapping into that energy stream. And Absolutely, what he, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. was what happened in Vienna back in the, the 1910s, uh, early 19 teens, that they would have been tapping into an energy. Some were good, some were bad. You know, that's, you know, this kind of thing, how it went. But the, 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 everybody plays down the, the connection between the National Socialists, the Armament or the, the, the Volkish movement, and the Templars. It doesn't get enough airplay. It doesn't get enough. Uh, I think it's a very, very serious subject that needs a lot more uh, discussion because it's only magic could explain the resurrection of Germany after World War I. You cannot explain that with just economics and policy. You can't. Something was tapped into in the war between 1919 and 19. You know, when Adolf Hitler walked into the Intercontinental Hotel in Munich, Rudolf Hess laid eyes upon him and said, there's a Kvaya Christ as the new Christ. You know, this is a guy who's just been recovering from a gas attack, you know, in a hospital. Yeah. You know, it, you know, there's there's magic forces at work here. Yeah, of course, yeah. And, recognize yeah. and we're, seeing them in, we're seeing them in Washington, D.C. in America at the moment. We're seeing the same magical forces. What you know, the, the playbook is still being played out. 
Oh, and yeah, it hasn't changed, yeah. Yeah, and when people go, oh, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm Labour, I'm Conservative, you're missing out on how you should really approach this stuff. What you dive into is what it means at the conscious level. When you dive into it, it becomes fantastic. It becomes a, a, a theatre that you can see mm-hmm. and weave yourself into and be the magician rather than being the observe, the fool. And uh, this is what makes discussions like this so important because we're not coming from a dogmatic point of view at any level. We're just saying, this is amazing. Yeah, it's Bring a bit it like light. trying to pull the curtain away, see the magician stood there behind, yeah. uh, like on The Wizard of Oz, and try and work out what is really going on behind the scenes. Because it's all a theatre, isn't it? Uh, Labour, Conservative, Republican, Democrat. It's all a play. It's people playing it, uh, playing out, playing it, their role on the stage. And to be, able, it's, to be able to see the magic behind it and what is really going on. So like the Druids or the, the way the pagans exist, survive in the, in the Christian world, you know, as witches and stuff like that, or as, as folk, you know, folk healers and stuff. I guess the Cathars ex- ex- survived in their own way too, maybe not officially, mm-hmm. but do you believe that officially there could have been, I guess there, I guess there could have been secret C- Cathar churches that existed on the ground? Oh, definitely. Must, you mean after, after the after, late 1200s? After, after the Inquisition, yeah. I think definitely, yeah. And because I mean, a, lot, a lot of escapes, and they, they, they stopped searching for them in the end because they weren't a threat to the church anymore. So once they disappeared into the Pyrenees and over to the Spanish side, which was Castile and into Italy, they went underground and they would have carried on just as they were before. And uh, so... If, and, they, and, they, and they were the, obviously the duelists, but they had their own secrets as well that were being passed down to them. Because you got to remember that uh, the, the leading families in the longer dot were immensely powerful, and they were the Knights Templar families and the Cathar families as well. They were the same thing. So they would have hidden beneath and carried on on that level. And as everything had to do, like that's why I ended up with mystery schools, you know, where do the where do the White Templar and the Cathars and the, and the present day mystery schools, where do they where do they combine? Where do they separate? Uh, masonry obviously was was uh, another thing that came out of the Knights Templar in Scotland, the uh, Scottish Rite. So I believe that all these things, I'm sure they did. They all went underground because they had to, because if you came out into the open, and uh, show and, and said, oh, I'm, you know, you, you'd had it, hadn't you? you You'd have been on a, on a spit before you knew uh, what you were doing. They come out symbolically. They come out symbolically. Like you said, they come out in symbols rather than actual mm-hmm. movement. Like, uh, Christopher Columbus was a Genovese, and that's just over the border from, that's not far, that's down the, you know, adjacent to Toulouse on the Italian side. So that's where a lot of them would have fled to. Girona. Uh, yeah. He was, he was Genovese, yeah, and Genoa. And he Genoa, sailed right. to America on three ships bearing the Templar cross. And that famous painting by Salvador Dali of, of Columbus discovering the new world, it's filled with esoteric symbolism, filled with it. Uh, Dali definitely had some kind of insight as well. Mm. And he was from, he was Catalonian, so he was on the other side of the Pyrenees. You yeah, do yeah, wonder yeah. if people like Christopher Columbus and artists like Salvador Dali inherited maybe if not a, if not directly or through family things got it through a, um, a a ancestral genetic memory or something you know because well you know there's something so powerful about the cathars oh incredibly powerful yeah that's why they're still a massive subject to say because people can relate to them in some way that they don't know and i think the templars are the same when the Templars, uh, in 1307, when the Templars were disbanded, Friday the 13th of October, Friday the 13th, they, they spread out into different directions. Obviously, they went up to Scotland, they went to, um, and they went to Sicily, but they would have, and also to Switzerland and various other places. So they would have put little pockets of their knowledge, which carried on. So that could, and, and uh, Catalan is a definite one. Because the connection between Girona 
and Ren Le Chateau is a whole story in itself. The first Tower Magdal to Magdala was in Girona. I've been to see it, it's been knocked down now, because they, they, they said it was, um, they, they thought there was magic powers there that they wanted to get rid of, so they knocked the tower down. Well, that was identical to the tower at Ren Le Chateau. So you end up with the two towers, like you, like in the Lord of the Rings. So the, the, yeah, the, so there was little pockets of these things. Everything connects up if you can get beneath the, the surface. Uh, the, the Templars are, ended up in Ireland in the North Valley in places around Kilkenny and Waterford. And that's where the Kennedy family is from, New Ross. The Kennedy, right. the, the JFK made a speech to the Italian American League in 1960, where he said, the family's real name is not Kennedy, it's Genovese. And they were Italian right. merchants who came from Genoa to Ireland. And that's right. JFK's yeah, yeah. own words. And that might explain the power of that family. Might well do, yeah. And then, then you've got this idea of uh, what, what, what is power and when is it good, when is it bad? Because but the even, the way, say, even, the way, even the way the Kennedy government was called Camelot. Wow, you yeah. Know, you know, and uh, yeah, but that, that's that speech is on record. He said to the Italian American League, the family is actually Italian, came to Ireland from Geno Genoa, and it's not Kennedy, it's Genovese. The Genovese. It's yeah. A lot of these families are uh, yeah. You if you follow the background, you 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 find and you find connections of families, you know, connecting up, don't you? And uh, you you look at the family trees and you think, well, how come this person is in is in this family? It came from that family, with like the Spencers and the Churchills and and uh, George Washington. There's a church near us where George Washington's family came from, and his his family tree has. The church uh, as the Spencers, so Princess Diane. It's as Churchill on the other side, and it's uh, it's amazing to see that everything came from this little place. And the the connection between the Cathars and the uh, Templars is they're very much connected to the flow of wine, wine trading, wine import, mm. wine export, wine making, the holy blood. Well, yeah, that's a that's a point. Yeah, I'm I'm connected in that because I do the wine drinking, so I'm yeah, carrying on the tradition, right, <laughs> bringing it into manifestation. At the end of the process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, speaking about the end of the process, <laughs> uh, I think we've been just over an hour. Right. So shall we call it? Yeah, I think that was, day. Yeah, I think I'm starting to start. I can feel myself getting wheezy again. Yes, oh, well, you need to yeah, rest. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad we did this because uh, it's a, another good, another good one. And uh, so there you have the magician, and uh, we even we even found a connection between that and the Templars and the uh, yeah. the Cathars, which shows why we study these subjects and why we're making these videos. And I hope everyone's enjoying them as much as we are. Absolutely, and, yeah, yeah. We'll see you for number six on my channel next week. Next, next week, yeah. So yeah, so please do, like we say, subscribe on both channels. We really would appreciate that. And uh, any comments? And thumb them up. Thumbs up, yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, and even if you told them tell, it's good because that registers us in the in the uh, the algorithm and pushes it up the the search engine. So yeah, yeah. so uh, you know, you, you know, just you know, this is there's a lot of esoteric stuff out there, and a lot of it is rubbish because it comes from a Christian viewpoint that it's all satanic or it's somehow sinister. It's used to damage us. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that it's only a, a, a dangerous thing if it's being if you are not using it yourself. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We could go ask another subject knowledge as well. About the Christian. Esoteric, but, esoteric knowledge is the greatest power. Absolutely, it is, and to use it properly and use it for the right reasons. Yeah. As he so puts his finger up like the magician at the end. Okay. Ah, 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 stay in a lab. I'll see you next stay in time. Alive. <laughs> stay in a lab. Right. Yeah. Now we're going daft now, so so we'll see you all. See you all next week. <laughs> tune this tune in next week for the next exciting episode of the magical uh, megalithic project. Bye everybody. <laughs>